talk a little about HF propagation as technicians. You can use the HF bands. You have phone privileges and Morse code privileges in the 10 meter band and Morse code privileges on 40, 80, and uh, 15, I think. Um, so you can get on, so you want to know a little bit about HF propagation. Question, what is the part of the atmosphere that enables propagation of radio signals around the world? Answer, ionosphere. Um, sunspots are your friend. Uh, you know, the, uh, some, some reason, and I, some, somebody better than I that can explain this, the more sunspots you have, the more, uh, the better the ionosphere is for HF propagation. I think it's because when you have more sunspots, it's emitting more whatever that causes the ionosphere to ionize. And, uh, for, and, and it's an 11-year cycle. I don't know if there's a question about that. It's an 11-year cycle. And unfortunately, we're on the downside of that 11-year cycle now. So for the next five or six years, conditions are going to get worse and maybe a little bit better. But unfortunately, you're getting into ham radio at the wrong time, at least if you want to be an HF operator. Um, so th the more sunspots you have, um, the more ionized this is, and, and the higher frequency bands you can then use, okay? The, like, like at the peak of the sunspot cycle, 10 meters is really good. And at the bottom, it's like useless. So it's, you know, on the higher frequency bands, it's feast or famine, really. Um, question, what may provide long distance communications during the peak of a sunspot cycle? Answer, six or 10 meters, that's uh, 50 megahertz and 30 megahertz. Um, time of day also uh, uh, affects the ionosphere. Obviously, you know, in the daytime, the sun is shining on the ionosphere, so you get more ionization. Um, and, and consequently, the, the higher bands are more useful during the daytime than at night. You know, at, at night, you're not going to make any contacts except maybe local line of sight contacts on 10 meters. But if, when the bands are good, 10 meters during the day is, is can be really good. What's the best question? What's the best time for long distance 10 meter band propagation via the F layer? Answer from dawn to shortly after sunset during periods of high sunspot activity. Um, what is the cause of a regular fading of signals from distant stations during times of generally good reception? Answer random combining of signals v arriving via different paths. So I don't know how many of you guys have listened to shortwave radio, but you know it's a common thing. You know things fade in and out. In amateur radio, we even have a, uh, 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 a term for that. We call it we call it QSB, and that's there's Q, there's Q signals, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But but we actually call it we call it QSB, and if you think about it, you know you have the ionosphere, and I've drawn it here as kind of a static thing, right? A static two-dimensional thing. But really, it's a dynamic, three-dimensional phenomena, right? And so, you know, if I'm, if I'm transmitting here and somebody's receiving here, you know, it could go this route, or it could go this route, or it could go all these different routes. Sometimes even go the long path route. <coughs> and, and so as these, just like multi-path distortion, the signals arriving from different paths can cancel or, or, uh, or increase or augment each other, and you get this variation in signal strength. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the phenomena. Um, in, the H, in DHF, UHF, we talk, I talked about the importance of polarization. Polarization is less a big a factor in HF communications. Why? Because once you send that signal up into the ionosphere, you, you have no idea what polarization it's going to come down in at your location. So, you know, horizontal, vertical, doesn't really matter on HF as far as, as, far as uh, propagation is concerned. So the, the question there is uh, um, how do skip seg signals or what happens, uh, what's the result of skip signals refracted from the ion ionosphere? Uh, answer, either vertically or horizontally polarized antennas may be used for transmission or reception. Any questions about propagation? Remember the ionosphere is your friend.
You know, like, like, why would you want to know this? Well, you know, the, the, you know, if you have an HF station, especially if you have an HF station, but you know, if you're just doing VHF, UHF too, you want to know this, because knowing, knowing the phenomena will make you a better communicator. For example, you'll know that <clears throat> you, you probably are not going to want to use 80 meters at 2 p.m. in the <coughs> afternoon. Why is that? Because the D layer, and there's no question on the test about this, because the D layer is going to absorb all, the, all your energy at that frequency during the daytime. What happens at night is you get less ionization, the, the D layer vanishes, and all of a sudden 80 meters in the evening will allow you long distance communication. And you, you know, the, the, as, as you get into it, and as you operate more, you gain more experience, you, you, you kind of you see that. I mean, you don't, you don't see it visually, but you see it in your mind. You know, you say, oh, it's 8 p.m., I'm on 80 meters, I'm talking to somebody in uh, Texas. Well, you know, you're never going to do that at 2 p.m. because it's just not going to propagate that far. So, you know, all those things considered. So you think, you, you, depending on when you can get on the air, you say, well, okay, what bands are going to be good at this point in time? And then you concentrate on those bands. So it, 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 it not only makes you a better communicator, it makes ham radio more fun for you. That's, that's part of the point.